Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you uh, to this session on trends in interfacing bio-based industry requirements with bioeconomy uh, education. I think we had heard already a wonderful talk from Luc van der Wielen really introducing uh, uh, this uh, topic. And uh, I think uh, to interface these uh, bio-based industry requirements with Bioeconomy education is important, providing education, introducing beginners, as well as connecting with professionals, and to address the different languages. I think that's a, certainly also an intellectual exercise uh, and needs in science, industry, and society is essential for research, innovation, and cooperation. And of course, we will have in this workshop uh, uh, a series of uh, very distinguished uh, speakers uh, from uh, uh, Japan, Australia, Europe, and I'm very happy and thankful that we have been able to come together and connect. Uh, so uh, we will, of course, also uh, like to discuss many questions with you, dear audience. Uh, uh, for example, what kind of new approaches are promising in interfacing, teaching highly specialized knowledge, skills, problem solving abilities with the requirements of bio-based industries making up the bioeconomy? Or second question, which new models of education tailor economic sciences to people acquiring bioscience knowledge and skills and vice versa? And the third question, what are the best practices and valuable bottom-up approaches for creating sustainable bioeconomy education programs, which can be connected with global top-down approaches? Uh, as we have seen, many, many practical problems, even uh, connecting in the digital space uh, uh, our worlds uh, need solutions, so, which we can only solve commonly, globally in addressing also the planetary boundaries, because up to now our planet Earth is the only one among the more than 4,000 exoplanets uh, and for which the recent Nobel Prize has been given uh, where life is known to exist. And to support the transition from a fossil base to a, a global uh, bioeconomy. So, I'm very happy to have uh, uh, such a distinguished, uh, such a list of distinguished speakers. And of course, uh, 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 I need to, I have to introduce also Dr. Carsten Schürli, who is uh, from uh, Dechema. Maybe uh, Carsten, I would like to uh, yeah. give you the opportunity to welcome the participants from your point. Thank you very much, for, uh, Roland, um, for the invitation, and I'm happy to assist you with moderating this session, this exciting session. My name is Carsten Schöler. I'm working with the uh, Chemical uh, with the Society for Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology in Frankfurt, Germany, and I am the contact person, so to say, for all um, topics related to bioeconomy. You know, uh, it's a learned society. We have um, membership consisting of experts from industry and um, academia. That's quite an interesting mixture. And we have several working groups on, on topics very closely related to bioeconomy, like uh, bioprocess engineering, biotransformations, bioinformatics, all these, these um, subtopics, which are very relevant. And I'm, yeah, I'm happy to be responsible for coordinating some of these activities and as I said, I like to join you as well in this workshop and hope we'll have a lot of fruitful discussions. Yeah, thank you very much, Carsten, for your introductory words. And uh, we'll have um, in our workshop uh, uh, pr first short presentations. And then, of course, we would like to involve you, dear audience, in discussing, uh, let's say, discussing your questions and uh, the uh, speakers will be happy to answer. And I have also prepared uh, some slides uh, so that we really uh, can discuss from a global perspective uh, these uh, challenges. And we will have uh, uh, distinguished speakers, uh, Professor Dr. Yasuisa Sama from Toyama Prefectural University in Japan. Uh, then, and I have to say, I, I uh, got the note uh, engineer Nello Emerencia. He's 
responsible program director for the bio-based industries consortium in Belgium. You're, he had an emergency this morning. He had to go to the medical doctor and he apologizes. He will not be able to speak today, but we will make his uh, 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 presentation available. Uh, just to say, uh, the bio-based industries consortium is involved in one of the largest European uh, project bio-based industries it's a, a close to four billion euro uh, initiative uh, then we have uh, it's my pleasure to welcome dr kai baldinius uh, formerly from basf and now with baldinius biotech uh, consulting in germany the junk professor dr karen robbins from uh, australia uh, uh, queensland university of technology and sustained biotech and uh, last but not least, uh, Professor <coughs> Volker Sieber from the uh, Technical University of uh, Munich. And without uh, going further into the detail, it's my great uh, pleasure to uh, now uh, introduce um, uh, Professor uh, Yasuhisa Asano from the Biotechnology Research Center and Department of Biotechnology. He is uh, very well known globally in uh, in the uh, uh, area, and I'm very happy uh, to uh, hand over the word now to uh, Professor Yasuhisa Asano. Please, Yasuhisa, the, the global digital space is yours. So you need to unmute uh, yourself on the uh, system. We can't hear you. There is an unmute uh, button on uh, on your uh, uh, computer. We still can't hear you. Uh, so, if you uh, there is a, a red uh, button uh, with the. Uh, microphone and you have uh, to unmute uh, that so that we can hear you. He is unmuted. It must be something with a microphone. Maybe uh, some kind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so there must be some uh, voice uh, connection problem. Let's yeah. see. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Uh, can you? Uh, uh, oh. Can you, you hear us? Me. Yes, can we can hear you. Yeah. Ah, okay. You can hear me. Yes. Ah, yeah. Okay. Now it's okay. Perfect. Okay. So I'll talk. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, just I have five uh, slides. So uh, I hear that uh, this is about bioeconomy and also related to education. So I just talk about uh, how we I made a PhD and also uh, student I worked with a student with Thai, from Thailand so uh, how should I make it turn on the, the slide ah I can move yeah I can just okay. say to me uh, next slide and I will move okay. the slide yeah some people might have heard about my talk but uh, I'll talk about uh, uh, the screening for enzymes. So source of the industrial enzymes and the species on, on us. The left, left hand, you see the source of industrial enzyme in a textbook. And as you know, the uh, microbiome, microbi uh, microorganism is the main source of the enzymes. And only a little bit of animal and plant origin enzymes are there. But on the other hand, in the right hand, there is a, a uh, number of the species, possible species on Earth. And uh, of course, everybody, uh, myself also, understand that uh, there's a lot of diversity in microorganisms. But as a species, uh, the number is not so much. So on the other hand, there are many uh, species, much species in 
animal and plant. Uh, of course, we are screening for a new uh, function of microorganisms, but uh, who can deny that there is no diversity, not too many diversity in anima, animal and plant? Probably nobody can deny the diversity of uh, plant and animals. So uh, I switched on uh, from 2000 uh, to 2000, years of, about 20 years ago, year of 2000, I started screening for uh, plant uh, enzyme. So would you turn on uh, to the next slide? Uh, next slide, please. So this I made uh, uh, because of this uh, student left hand, young uh, student uh, came from Thailand. So I thought that it would be nice that uh, picking, up, picking up some theme from Thailand. So I, uh, of course, before that, I knew that uh, screening uh, plant, uh, hydroxynitrile lye is one of the most important uh, uh, industrial biocatalyst. And I was, uh, I again started from screening in the, about 20 years ago. Uh, so, uh, and I bought a very expensive uh, fruit uh, from passion fruits. Uh, and I found uh, some activities in uh, leaves and uh, uh, seeds of the passion fruit, but it's, it's quite expensive in, in Japan. So uh, I uh, searched for uh, the source of the enzyme and uh, wrote to the Thai, Thai people, the Thai professors, and there was a co collaboration. I made a collaboration with the Chiang Mai University, professor in the left hand to me, and uh, he introduced me a uh, very north, north Thailand, where the border of uh, uh, Thailand, where they even cultivated opium in the old time, but in, uh, now they are cultivating safe uh, fruits. And uh, we uh, purify the enzyme from leaves and uh, solve the structure gene. We isolate the gene and also uh, solve the structure and discover the one of the most small, the smallest uh, HNL, hydroxynitrile, right? Only with 121 amino acid, and we solve the structure. So this is uh, one of the digital, digital uh, results. So uh, this is maybe uh, nice to educate him uh, from uh, source unknown source of Thailand. So we just turn on to the next slide. So uh, I also was interested in how to, uh, I was thinking of uh, uh, enzyme source of uh, animal, but uh, there's a difficulty, of course, plant and animal are hard to collect a large sample. Microorganisms can be cultivated in a large scale, but uh, there is a difficulty. So. I was thinking of a cyanogenic uh, uh, micro uh, animal, which is a millipede. I knew for a long time, but there was a, about 10 years ago, there was a big, uh, big mass, uh, uh, mass uh, invasion uh, from South, South uh, Taiwan and the South Kyushu Island of Japan through Okinawa. And there was a big propagation of this uh, millipede. So still I'm collecting these uh, in uh, going to South uh, South Kyushu Island to enjoy the nature and not only to 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 harvest them and we I uh, even had uh, kilos of this animal and solve the structure of the enzyme and the primary sequence is nothing nothing is homologous so uh, totally unknown structure and uh, this is the time so I solved the structure recently and the last slide is that uh, through the last slide please and the last slide. Uh, I, uh, by challenging the, the uh, not expressible, so the those, uh, source of the enzyme gene is different from microorganisms. So it may be difficult to, to uh, proper, always uh, aggregate. So I uh, mutated them and uh, I, I established some rule to solubly express it. So uh, I called it alpha helix rule and hydropathy contraction rules. So uh, changing the alpha helix is the uh, polarity of the I uh, finding by software the polarity and change it to a more hydrophobic uh, region. They align uh, the hydrophobic amino acid, hydrophilic region I align the hydrophobic amino acid. Then uh, uh, it would be possible to predict by one prediction, no screening and so uh, uh, can form uh, some solubility mutation. So uh, not many students work hard not compared with previously. So uh, collaboration with uh, maybe uh, computer people is very good. Uh, one of the way to uh, uh, seek for more 
So that's all. So it's a short for me, but uh, it's, I would like to stop the preparation, uh, presentation. Thank you very much. So uh, educational reason uh, widens the collaboration is my uh, conclusion. And looking at the very interesting phenomena of plant and animal, maybe students may be more uh, interested in and also collaborate with other uh, countries. That's my message. So thank you very much, Lola. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you uh, very much, yeah, uh, yeah. Yasuhisa, for this uh, yeah. very uh, great uh, uh, overview. Uh, uh, there is, of course, uh, much more, uh, and uh, we will have uh, the question and answer session after all the uh, short uh, presentations. So I'm sorry that uh, we have <laughs> to move on. Uh, yes, yes. Because we have only one uh, hour. So thank you very much uh, again, thank you very uh, much. Yasuhisa. Thank you. Yeah, arigato gozaimasu. Arigato, thank you. Uh, so uh, it's my uh, pleasure. As I mentioned, uh, Nilo Emerencia had an emergency, so we will uh, move on uh, uh, directly to uh, uh, the uh, next uh, talk. And it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Dr. Kai uh, Baldinius, uh, who, as mentioned, uh, work has a tremendous uh, experience in uh, biocatalysis industry, both uh, uh, biotechnology and chemistry, and now has uh, uh, founded uh, a new company. And uh, uh, he will talk on the requirements of university education to develop the bioeconomy from an industrial point of view. So uh, the digital space is uh, yours, uh, Kai, please. So we can't, you have to unmute yourself. So we can't hear you. The microphone is still uh, not on. Can you click on the unmute uh, button? Uh, here's Carson. Roland, perhaps you can assign the audio to um, Kai. Uh, I uh, doesn't. I can't click. Uh, oh, I see. Um, Yasuhisa is is still the host. He has to assign hosting rights to somebody else, preferably you or me. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I think in, in principle it should work. I'm just an ordinary participant and I can mute and unmute myself. Uh, yeah, I think I so, can't uh, I can't unmute uh, Kai, so uh, yeah. uh, it has to be done from your side, Kai. But Nelo is now in, so maybe uh, we can... Ah, okay. Uh, I, I, didn't can see, I didn't see... Uh, ah, fantastic. Uh, uh, Nelo, I'm uh, very glad that you... Uh, that uh, to see you here, I thought uh, the uh, emergency uh, takes uh, longer. So, uh, uh, would you... Let, Nelo, would you be able to? Uh, uh, I I need to go back. Can Nelo, you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. 
Yes, I uh, I came back uh, quicker from the uh, my appointment than I. Oh, fantastic, uh, fantastic! Congratulations. So then I suggest, uh, uh, Kai, that we uh, uh, stop here. So maybe you have a chance to check your, the microphone, and we upload the presentation from uh, from Nelo. Um, okay, can you? Can you do it or should yes, I? Yes, I can. I just uh, need to do it. Yes. Can you see it? Uh, let me see. Yes, I see that uh, I'm in. The Align Bio-Based Industry Skills. Can you? That's uh, your talk, uh, Nelo. Yes. To OK. Me. You suggest that I make my presentation? Yes, now? I suggest now that uh, because of uh, we have some voice connection problems with uh, with Germany, so uh, I suggest that we go back to the original schedule, uh, and then uh, I'll be happy to introduce uh, Nelo Emerentia, who is the director of program of the Biobased Industries uh, uh, Consortium, and uh, I, without further. Uh, introduction, uh, I will hand over the digital space to you, Nelo. Okay, thank you very much, Roland, and good morning to everyone. Um, I'm uh, invited to speak a few words about the needs from the industry's perspective uh, about of skills and, and, and competencies for the future. And this is what I would like to uh, talk about in the next, uh, what, five, six uh, minutes or something. Um, what I would like to uh, quickly start with is uh, is uh, to say a few words about BIC. Uh, can I move the slides on myself, or do you have to? Move no, I have to. Uh, just tell me move the next. Yeah. Slides. So if you if you go ahead to the next, go ahead, go ahead. So BIC, um, we have a mission that we are out to build new bio-based value chains. Nowadays, we call them value circles to express the need to have them be circular. And uh, what we're out to do is to convert biomass and biomass residues into value added products by applying the newest technologies, et cetera. And we are partnering with the commission in a public private partnership. And the greatest gain from that partnership is that it helps create a business and policy climate to accelerate market uptake of uh, the new products. If you move to the next slide, uh, please Roland, um, quick uh, overview of what BIC is the Biobased Industries Consortium. At this moment, we count over 240 members from industry. These are large and small enterprises. I must tell you that 80% of our members are small, medium-sized en uh, enterprises. But more interesting it is when you look at who the sectors are that we represent, who we have in our midst. And you see they represent agriculture, food and feed, aquaculture, and marine, chemicals and material, forestry, built on paper, market actors. We start moving into the market few years ago, uh, technology providers, waste management, municipalities, etc. And now um, with the new vision that we uh, have just written, we're moving out into the society, but I'll come to that in a minute. Next to the industry members, we also have associate members. These are universities, RTOs, associations, trade associations, technology platforms, etc. And they represent all the disciplines that we would need in um, in a bio-based uh, uh, industry. The next slide shows you the vision that we have written to start uh, the, uh, the new process towards the, the future. We call it the circular bio society in 2050. You see now the word society comes in. So aside from the industry, aside from academics and the technology providers and municipalities, we really want to move into the community and involve citizens and consumers in helping us to aim our value circles in such a way that it really uh, responds to the needs of the society. On the next slide I'm showing is that, that it's not only BIC, the Biobased Industries Consortium that has written this, we, have, we, writ, we wrote the, the vision, but we have included input from all these societies or associations that I'm showing you here. You see all uh, representing the primary uh, sectors, you see also the uh, moving into the market like ethanol producers etc so from this moment on big is coordinating the uh, field when we talk in our partnership with the commission and the next slide i start to move on to where it is 
why we need this diverse set of skills. You see, this is a very simplified overview on what we are trying to do in building new sustainable bio-based value circles. You see, from the feedstock side, we are out to use any feedstock really that contains the carbon atom. And it comes from the land or from the sea or from the air. We are combining non-traditional partners with each other in new value chains to make value added products. And the circularity, I'm trying to express that by this arrow that shows reuse and recycle, degrade and compost. So it is because we have all these different people working together that we need, we see now already that we have this uh, big need of people with a very diverse set of skills. And if I move to the next slide, please, uh, Ron, you see for us now to ensure the skills and the competences for the future, we set out uh, the following strategy. To start with, we want to measure, we want to know by asking the industry itself, what is the set of skills and competences that any company within our membership would need uh, for the future. And we look, we're asking them to look at 2030 and beyond. Then we started a first pass to see what are the existing and planned curricula from the educational institutions and try to map and see where we see gaps or where we uh, anticipated the gaps that already exist would grow. And then we started also, well, also in the strategy, we started to see what are the possibilities and opportunities for lifelong learning, which is really a must in our path forward. And the next steps really are to dialogue with educational institutions to pursue alignment of needs and circular and, and curricula as much as possible. We know that every, not everything that we want really from industry is possible or not possible within the short term. So we need to come to some sort of an action plan that we can move forward. And we uh, also are out to include education as needed in actions with or for society. Um, the annual work plan 2018 that we brought out, we included there a one year a topic for a one year project in the project called Your Bio Future. And that project carried out for us these uh, first three steps in the strategy. And the results were just given uh, to me uh, a couple of weeks ago and we're now studying them and starting to, to uh, move on them. But what I would like to show you just the highlights of what this survey has resulted. If you move on to the next slide, please, Roland. I'm showing you the top five skills needed as expressed by the industry. And this is uh, industry, large, small. We've, we started asking only big members, but then we went beyond. We, uh, we also surveyed industry actors outside of big. And you see that on the number one position is what uh, industry finds research and innovation. And these two um, lines and each are saying what are the main topics in there or the main sub uh, co uh, competences. You see knowledge transfer, we really need to move from lab to industry with creative ideas. This upscaling, this is what we're going to push for in the next years. The second position follows personal initiative and entrepreneurship. Really need to have more entrepreneurship in educational institutions for the future engineers. They need to have, be able to do critical thinking, problem solving, etc. In management, you see uh, on the third position, the need to be able to develop business models because this is what we're doing really to bring all these different sectors together. We're out to make and create new business models. Sustainability and industry on the fourth position, you see this, the emphasis on circularity, on zero waste, on sustainability is all there. And on the fifth position, specialist in bio-based sector business, we need to also, we still need good engineers, good masters and PhD people. So with, with real knowledge of the, of the matter at hand, but be, uh, besides that, the people that we need in the future need to have these, what we call, or people could call soft skills, etc. cetera. In the next slide, I'm showing the overview of um, universities and curricula across Europe that were uh, looked at in this project. We see the project went over 1,228 programs across Europe and the dots uh, are showing where these uh, institutions are, uh, where these programs are given. And after that, um, we started to, to map, is there any difference? And I'm showing you an example uh, in the next slide 
For example, the first uh, need, the industry's needs for research and innovation, you see there the ranked uh, sub competences in the top is innovation and change, followed by knowledge transfer, followed by management and development of research, analytical capacity, etc. Also, what we ask the industry is to indicate at which level you see these uh, competences mostly needed. And we looked at vocational engineering level, masters and PhD, and this graph on the side here shows you, for example, that research management and development is mostly needed from the industry perspective on a PhD level. So even though we are pushing the um, application of science or applied sciences, we still are interested in, in fundamental research because we realize that the pipeline must continue to be filled. If we look at the next slide, quick overview of what we found in this field, uh, the current offer of educational programs, you see uh, on the different levels indicating there what is, um, how it's being offered across Europe. And the main gaps is I put in the block there in the, in the bottom. Analytical capacity uh, is one of the gaps that we have identified in this process, which is higher in education than ranked by the industry. And the knowledge transfer is highly needed, more higher need expressed by the industry than it's currently offered by education. And it is therefore with these gaps that we have uh, identified that we're now setting out to start this dialogue with educational institutions across Europe. Our main partner will be the, uh, the European uh, University for Bioeconomy, the one coordinated by Hohenheim University, but we are going to do this action across Europe. Thank you. This is a quick uh, overview of uh, what we're looking for, the need for skills and competences to maintain a sustainable bio-based industry across Europe. Thank you. Well, thank you uh, very much, Nero, for this uh, uh, great uh, overview on uh, uh, Europe, uh, bio-based industries and educational programs. And uh, we uh, move on to uh, uh, Kai Baldenius uh, and uh, try to see uh, whether the microphone is uh, working. Uh, uh, Kai, can you uh, hear us? I don't see Kai among us anymore. Oh. So maybe he had some uh, connection uh, problems. Well, uh, then let's uh, move on uh, because we are under time uh, uh, pressure. Uh, so Kai, uh, if Kai doesn't uh, have a connection right now, I think we can we can move back uh, later. Uh, Kai, can you can't you hear me? I don't see him in the participant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's not uh, here. Does okay. So then uh, let's uh, then. Uh, uh, move on to the uh, next speaker. It's my great pleasure uh, to introduce um, adjunct professor Karen Robbins from Australia. And uh, she has uh, also uh, uh, great experience both from industry as well as academia. And uh, uh, Karen will talk about interfacing industrial requirements, megatrends, and uh, bioeconomy education. So, Karen, the digital space is uh, yours, and you have to unmute your microphone. Yes, I think I can you hear me? Yes, I just perfect. unmuted. Oh, excellent. Okay, thanks, Roland. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, as uh, Roland just said, I'm going to talk about interfacing industry requirements, megatrends and bioeconomy education. Before I start, I probably need to give a little bit more detail to my background so that I give a little bit of context to what I'm about to say. Um, I lived in Switzerland for 30 years where I worked for Lonza in the biotechnology research and development um, department. And seven years ago, I moved home to Australia and I'm living in Sydney at the moment. Um, I started my company, Sustain Biotech, which is one of the main activities is actually uh, writing business intelligent reports for um, adding value to waste streams from agriculture and the food industry. And in this capacity, I've worked very uh, closely with the Queensland University of Technology, which is 1000 kilometers away in um, Brisbane. And um, 
I also have there an adjunct uh, professor position, which is an honorary position, but it gives me um, access to um, the students and are, are partly involved in, in their education. I have the next slide, please. So um, megatrends and disruptors that are enabling actually um, the bioeconomy to progress at the moment. Um, biotechnology is a really um, essential part of the bioeconomy. And I think I can honestly say that today, um, the, that the promise and potential of biotechnology for the very first time is matching reality. And this is because of the great advances in um, enzyme uh, design by, for biocatalysis, the food industry, but also for the pretreatment of biomass, and of course, synthetic biology. And this has all, all been supported by um, the rapid advances in the bioinformatics, um, big data analysis, and then on the ter in terms of technology, um, high throughput screening labs and rapid and cheap uh, synthesis of DNA and RNA and also sequencing. This is enabling us to actually um, solve the current problems and also a lot of our future problems. Things like doubling our food production by 2050 by producing alternate proteins, cleaning up toxic um, chemicals and also recycling our plastic, our textiles and um, producing uh, new biomaterials and replacing fossil fuel derived commodity chemicals and um, biofuels. Can I have the next slide, please? So um, the most important part is for the bioeconomy or the success of the bioeconomy is the successful interfacing of um, tertiary education on the left-hand side and industry on the right-hand side. This also has to be um, interfaced with government and also global communities. Uh, if we look at um, the interfaces in the tertiary education, I think we can all agree that the fundamentals of the STEM, um, so biology, chemistry, physics, and, and mathematics are a very important um, disciplines for our future graduates, but also um, teaching them critical thinking. Um, this all has to be, have an industrial focus and this we can achieve through internships and collaborative projects with both industry and, and, and universities. Um, soft skills are also really important. Um, just talking about one of them, creativity, I think has been uh, supported by the iGEM Synthetic Biology Competition, of which um, Australia has had their first um, Australian Syn Bio Challenge, which was modelled um, closely on the iGEM uh, model. And um, it was a really nice way of engaging um, undergraduates and master students from all Australian universities and engaging them in research at a very um, young stage in their career so that they can actually use synthetic biology to solve um, societal problems. Um, another aspect of, um, of the tertiary education, which is really important, I think it's been touched on already, was the fact that we have to have interdisciplinary and not multidisciplinary um, teaching of the STEM subjects, but also include business, law, and um, design, like fashion, architecture, landscape, and journalism, into the curricula for a successful bioeconomy. Um, on the side of it, from on the industry side of view, there's always a discussion of whether universities should produce specialists or generalists. Now, in my opinion, and in my experience at Lonza, both um, have their place. Um, a specialist will always work in um, interdisciplinary teams and they need to be able to um, speak the technical language of the other disciplines, but also understand the broader concepts. And this will enable the team to successfully um, have a holistic approach to the development of a, um, of, of a uh, sorry, of a process and to scale up successfully in a rapid manner. Um, the generalist also has a, um, a place in industry, especially in the regulatory um, roles, for example, like quality assurance, because these people have to be able to talk with uh, people from every discipline and, and communicate successfully. Um, one of the other aspects that are really important for the successful bioeconomy um, development in, in industry is the lifelong uh, specific training, and I'll go into that in a little bit of detail on my last slide. Um, from the point of view of, of government, if you do not have a political, a good political support, the bioeconomy will not be successful. Um, in Australia, one example is that our government has set up their um, Australian Research Council, uh, Council Centre of Excellence for Synthetic Biology, which is a platform that not just gives funding to students, and but it also allows a collaborative uh, platform where industry and universities can work together 
on projects that are important for, for industry. So can I have the next slide, please? Uh, so using uh, the QUT as an example, um, the uh, Queensland University of Technology Centre for Agriculture and Bioeconomy has um, applied a really or tailored and a, a very specific approach to industrial biotechnology and synthetic biology teaching. Now this is um, based basically on the Queensland government's um, a commitment to establishing a bioeconomy um, in, in Queensland. Queensland has a population of 5 million people and it's in the northeast um, part of Australia. Um, it is, it's one of its main uh, industries is agriculture. So it's meat and, and sheep, uh, sorry, meat. So it's beef and sheep, but also tropical crops like sugarcane and bananas. This sets them up in a really um, perfect situation for the bioeconomy because they have um, bio, a lot of biomass and very favorable biomass for the bioeconomy, but also they produce a lot of waste from the agriculture and food residues that can be then recycled and used in sustainable processes. Um, as you can see here on the left hand side, the, um, the, the teaching has been really tailor made to, to Queensland and the agricultural um, importance of that economy. So in the teaching, as well as the other STEM uh, project, uh, sorry, disciplines, you'll see that they're looking at biomass, waste processing and pretreatment. In their industrial chemistry, they've included hydrothermal liquefaction. Um, as you can see, synthetic biology and protein engineering are very important aspects. But one other of them is actually going from lab to pilot scale, both um, in fermentation and downstream processing. Um, QUT is in the unique position in, of Australian universities that they own a biorefining facility which has a 10 cubic um, metre fermenter and also the capability of um, pretreatment of biomass and also producing biofuels. Um, so the students are really lucky. They actually get a real life or real world experience in their um, practical training. Um, some of their approaches to their training is also um, very interesting and, and I find them very successful. Uh, the students on the right hand side of this um, uh, this slide, you can see them, they're looking at a 3D video of an ethanol plant. And this is a virtual tour, which they can do in their um, in the lecture hall and has proved to be extremely um, successful to students. It engages them, it makes them enthusiastic, but also gives them a real life um, experience, exactly what um, an ethanol plant would look like. Um, as well as all of this, they've also in they include techno-economic um, aspects of these processes, and they've introduced um, the disciplines of law, business, and design. And by design, I mean the fashion, for example, the fashion industry, because textile la um, recycling is such a big issue, as is um, the production of new biomaterials. Um, the lab to pilot um, culture, it also extends to field testing. So the students that are the graduates that come out of this program are actually very well equipped um, for their, their career in the bioeconomy. So maybe we could go to the next um, slide. So just, um, this is the last slide. I just wanted to have a few additional points from the point of view of industry for the bioeconomy. Um, internships are highly recommended for students. Not only will the student benefit from this, the um, industry will as well, but industry has to have a very strong culture, which is encourages to interns, but also gives um, the uh, employees time to give um, adequate mentoring. In this way, both the student and the um, industry um, will benefit because you will also see some of your students that you may want to employ at a later date. Um, the lifelong training is also a really important aspect um, at the moment, and I can use Longsa as an example, in-house training programs for site-specific training is perhaps already established, but it's going to become more and more important in the future that there's going to be new te technology programs and career development programs, which offers a huge opportunity for universities. They can offer these um, training programs tailored to the workforce. So either um, offer these programs as a block course, intensive block course, or as an online course. Um, one aspect that hasn't been, um, perhaps hasn't been addressed till yet is the necessity of having specialized plant operators and technicians. A lot of the bioeconomy will take place in agricultural areas where there is really a lack of skilled operators. Um, Lonza had actually the same problem 
perhaps for different for geographical reasons. And they went about solving this problem by having very strong and intensive on site training, which proved very successful. Um, the other thing they have, and I really uh, think it's a great uh, way, it's very, um, uh, how do you say that, very um, typical of Switzerland is that they have a very strong uh, apprenticeship program, which really um, contributes to the quality of the workforce. And I think that, um, yeah, to Swiss, Swiss quality as well. There's other options, uh, a centralized standard training programs are also possible. Um, the last po point I think is a strong communication skill. And when we talk about that, we often think about um, technical reporting, but I think in, in terms of the bioeconomy and, and in terms of the technology that's around today, it's really important that the graduate students um, are able to engage the broader public on social media um, to inform them about the, the, the positive sides of the bioeconomy and to um, bring them to, so that they will support this um, new side of our, our, our economy. The other side of it, of course, is that um, I, just through age, there's often a lot of conservative management in all of these companies. Now, new graduates need to be able to also introduce sustainable practice and new technology and to convince their management that these are practices that should be, should be implemented. Thank you, that's the end. Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, Karin. I think uh, this last point is known to uh, all people uh, on the uh, industrial uh, world uh, side. So I think uh, uh, it's uh, uh, a very important communication uh, skill and uh, quite often also languages between different, not only between different disciplines, but also between different areas in an industry uh, need to be translated. So thank you very much. We will have uh, uh, time for questions and answers. And after all presentations uh, have been done, I'm sorry that we are a little bit behind schedule, but uh, I think it's really exciting. And uh, I try now to call uh, Kai. Uh, Kai, can you, uh, can you say something? Now? Yeah, perfect. Oh, I'm glad that you... Okay. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> because, so I dialed uh, in by we telephone. Seem, we seem and to have been to lost in the digital space. Uh, so it's my I great pleasure to um, introduce uh, now Dr. Kai uh, Baldenius, uh, uh, who has great uh, experience in uh, uh, both uh, also industry and uh, 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 relation with uh, academia and he has worked uh, uh, for BASF and now has created his own company, uh, Valdenius Biotech uh, Consulting. And he will talk today about uh, requirements of university education to develop the bioeconomy and uh, an industrial point of view. So we look uh, forward to your talk, Kai. Yes, yeah, so I've put down a few thoughts that I had to really, um, look at what kind of education or, or graduate students do we need in industry um, to prepare the bioeconomy. Um, if you could move the slides, please. So what does a desirable future scientist look like? Um, well, he certainly, he or she certainly needs the experience of a deep dive into science. So they need to be expert in a field for a moment, um, at least for their very serious PhD time. Um, so I, I see more and more of the scientists that we employ, even engineers, uh, with the need to have a PhD, simply because you need the experience of deep research. But you need to be prepared, and that's the second point, to change your fields of expertise many times in your life. You're not the expert starting with your PhD and you remain the same field forever. So um, during your education, you need to get a very broad background um, in the field that is surrounding the bioeconomy. That starts from statistics. The principle of thermodynamics are very important. Synthetic organic chemistry, molecular biology, and um, what I missed here, but what I would also like to add, I think you sh should learn during your studies to do a life cycle analysis, at least to read one and to understand it. Um, I, I'm very much in favor of 
a strong practical education. I think if you do natural sciences, you should um, spend half of your teaching time in the labs. And yes, of course, you learn how you need to learn how to collect information and read it critically, fact versus fake news, and uh, maintain this ability throughout your entire career. Um, this is a basis that you need to bring into your career from the very beginning. Um, and you need to um, be ready for teamwork. So you should have experience in international diverse team working. And so I think very great programs that we have here in Europe is the Erasmus and then later on the Marie Curie programs for international cooperation in science. Next slide, please. Just to remind you, these are the goals that we all strive for. Neither bioeconomy nor circular is here as a goal. It's just an instrument that we can use to achieve our goals. And I would put a very strong emphasis on goal 13. That is a big challenge for us. And that's the challenge um, that by bio, the bioeconomy can help to, um, or it can help to fulfill the goal of not increasing the um, atmosphere's temperature by more than a one degree and a half. Next slide, please. This, these are the goals. This uh, view at the facts at the current status. On the left hand side, you see how our energy raw um, supply is um, composed today. And there are 12 billion tons of fossils that we use currently. Most of that is for power generation, transport, heating, and industrial use, like steel and cement making. Only 3% of our fossil resources actually end up in plastics, and maybe 5 to 8% in chemicals in total. So if um, I, I see many people, they focus entirely on substituting plastics by bio-based raw materials. And that is simply um, losing the main fo or losing the main focus. That is only a very, very minor field um, of activity if we really want to achieve the goal 13 of climate neutrality. And um, this is, I, I show this slide simply to put our back ourselves a little bit back in a back seat and look at the entire picture just with bio economy substituting plastics for example um, we are not we are far 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 away from achieving our goals so and we should also keep in mind that um, the global biomass supply only is about 12 billion tons um, if you keep in mind that this has a much lower energy content than the fossils have today. We know that even with the entire biomass under our control shifted into energy production, we are not going to meet the goal. So there are more important things to do first, and that is really convert our primary energy input from fossils into renewables. So I would have wished that the EU now were ready to spend 750 billion on the corona recovery would put this first of all into renewable electricity, um, setting up huge solar um, photovoltaic power plants in the south of Europe, um, supported by some wind and a strong grid throughout Europe, just to do a, head, um, a strong move towards re, um, replacing fossils. Next slide, please. So here is, this is the mess in the middle of Germany, picture very new, piles of coal all over. Um, and for the next 30 years, we have to get rid of this coal and other fossils, of course. Biomass by itself is insufficient, so we have to learn if we use biomass to use it very efficiently and um, so if we, if we use biomass, then we need to look, do, uh, do we have a high value creation with the product that I get out of there? Or can I substitute as much fossil as possible? This is my call for efficiency. And this is, should, 
um, always kept by students and researchers kept in mind. Um, it's not a value by itself to use biomass at a place where fossils have been used so far. It needs to be used efficiently. Next slide, please. So, but there are true technology challenge for the bioeconomy that we have to tackle fast and we can contribute with that maybe more efficiently to, to achieve um, the climate goals than with the simpler replacement of, of plastics. For example, meat replacement. Um, we need to make vegan protein sources more delicious so that people really change from meat consumption to, um, to vegetable protein sources. That would um, put a huge relief on our um, CO2 carbon footprint. Um, so is someone else, I have an echo on my line. Maybe Roland, you need to mute. Precision farming would intensify agriculture, forestry, and help to reduce the environmental burden of the bioeconomy. And at end, finance increased efficiency and yield for all transformation. And that is probably the field where I used to work most in the past. It's using enzymes to make processes more efficient. efficient. And um, it should be guided by the idea, how do I get most of the final product out of one hectare of arable land? Okay, I think I'm done now. I just stop talking so that we um, stop the echo as well. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to the further discussion. Well, thank you, uh, Kai, uh, very much. Uh, so uh, I have actually, by the way, muted my microphone. So, but it still kept on the echo. So uh, we have to uh, dig deeper where the echo comes from. Uh, so. So, uh, sorry for the echo. Don't know where it comes from. Anyway, it's gone. So I think it has must have been this this Kai system. So it's good so, now again, at least with my computer. Yeah. So I hope that we can. I will mute myself uh, after my introduction. It's my special pleasure to introduce Volker Sieber. Uh, he's uh, also well known to the global community and is now rector of the uh, Technical University of uh, Munich. And uh, he will uh, talk uh, today about how to shape education for a sustainable bioeconomy. Uh, please, uh, Volker, the digital space is yours and I will mute myself. Yes, th th thank you, Roland. Uh, just uh, as a small correction, I'm not rector of the technical, not rector of the Technical University of Munich. Uh, we have a president, a very important president. I'm just rector of the campus Straubing uh, of the TUM, which is the bioeconomy campus uh, of TUM. So uh, one of the uh, largest bases uh, in Germany to study bioeconomy. The next slide, please. And so just as an introduction, originally bioeconomy was seen mostly uh, about biomass utilization and uh, what to do with it and how to convert it. But this is only a small part of the bioeconomy. It's an important part. Actually, it's the center of the bioeconomy, but that's not all. Next slide. So Besides this utilization of biogenic resources with all its limitations that Kai clearly uh, uh, elaborated on, which he's completely right when you look at the masses, um, then uh, we do have other things that, that are important to discuss and to work with. And they are written here, it's uh, how to get enough biogenic resources. So agriculture, the ecosystem diet protection is more on, there are more issues on that. Society is important and certainly industry has to be involved. Um, my, I see it now a bit too big and yeah, now it's good. So next slide, please. 
So this means that the education in this area is not just on biotechnology and, and chemistry, it has been broader and it has to be interdisciplinary. It's something that we already heard in, in the talks uh, before. Um, so just very shortly summarizing, it's about economics, but also management to different subjects, actually. In Germany, it's all, all Betriebswirtschaft and, and Volkswirtschaft, but it's very different and it has to be included. Also social sciences, logistics, and all this has to be then considered all the, in the teaching. Next slide, please. So uh, the question that, that we went out at TUM for quite some time or quite some time already uh, ago was whether we should enter the subject of bioeconomy in some current curricula or whether we should build up uh, a completely new curricula for advancing the bioeconomy. And we realized that it's important that, uh, well, you need to uh, bring up new study courses and you bring up the, the lecturers, the professors, the scientists uh, together under one roof, being dedicated to the subject of bioeconomy. Uh, because uh, if it's just in the normal sites, the normal departments, there it's business as usual and they do a little bit go into this direction, but it's not a full commitment. And so this full commitment in our view was necessary. And this is why TUM uh, has founded this campus, this separate campus striving for biotechnology and sustainability. Next slide, please. And this campus is a bit outside of the main campi uh, that the TUM has, which is in Munich and close to Munich, Freising and Garching, um, where there are several hundreds of professors and, and 40,000 students all in all. Uh, so this is outside, and if you see next slide, uh, that you see why it is there, because uh, there is in Bavaria, uh, which is Bavaria itself is quite agricultural, but also very high tech. Uh, here we have the combination. We have a lot of agricultural and forestry resources, so the biomass is available, but we also have the, the centers for uh, working with this and maybe around if you could make a little bit smaller no not not make it a little bit smaller because we can't see yeah that's good so we have research institutions like Fraunhofer uh, and uh, also a lot of companies and an industrial side a port where even from Australia uh, industrial goods are shipped and, and utilized so this setting is very important for our educational setting as well because we have this strong interaction with with these players with the industry with the pilot plan next slide please and what's also important in our view is the, that the researchers and educators, and by that also the students, are still connected to all the other competencies, uh, core competencies uh, at the TUM, so the other schools, um, so the mechanical engineering, chemistry, etc. Next slide. And so with that, we set out uh, already 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, with establishing a uh, study course, which we called Renewable Resources. Uh, by economy, the, the term was not that fashionable at that time, but it's basically the same thing. And this was a very broad, a very general study course. So including the four areas that you see here, economics, then the process engineering, chemistry, et cetera, and the, also the uh, agricultural forestry. And what we learned back then, I mean, we do have some experience now, what we, we learned back from, from the industry where our graduates went to, that uh, they saw that this generality, or let's say the, 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 the interdisciplinarity um, as being beneficial, especially uh, that our graduates were very, good in knowledge transfer and analysis skill and in, in evaluating things critically. However, what also is we learned is that it's really generalists and you need to have some fundament, you need to have some speciality if you, well, leave your study course. And so we rearranged, we remanaged re it. Next slide, please. And we now within the four areas that are shown here, the economics and management, the energy and process engineering, chemistry and biotechnology and material sciences, 
these were the four key areas that we learned were important and we designed new study courses that were really set in one of the four corners here in one of the four quarters and but also uh, leapt out into the other areas so that it's still interdisciplinary but with a solid uh, support with a, with a solid fundament in one area so that we have some specialists that do have the ability to think and act interdisciplinary and we have a study course on bioeconomy which is uh, for example having the name but which is more of the uh, economics and if you go to the next slide please um, so here just uh, two curricula very very generally so one is management uh, which you see has a solid basis in management being purple but having also very strong in, income from engineering and sciences and the bioeconomy as i said it's more of a, the um, economics so volkswirtschaftlich in, in, in german uh, but also here very strong in the more uh, technical fields next slide please um, study course in chemical biotechnology, uh, where we heard already from from others and the yesterday and also Nelo mentioned it that you do need uh, here the experience in the biology, but also you need chemistry and you need process engineering to really be able to uh, work in this field. And so we termed this uh, that uh, what our graduates should should have that they should be able to learn from biology, think like a chemist and act as an engineer. So really incorporating those three areas. Next slide. Uh, what's also important and what we, we heard today in the talk that here the interaction is very important with, between the students and the students with other students worldwide. And for this, we built up the, uh, for example, the Global Bioeconomy Alliance, where we have the student exchange over the globe because bioeconomy is a global issue. Um, on the other hand, we also have strong ties in, in Europe along the Danube region, the um, Moldau region, so towards East Europe, there's also quite a strong uh, move towards bioeconomy where the agricultural resources are much, much more better than in Western part of Germany. Next slide. Uh, what we also learned is that it's very important to know of the students. So we had the first green office in Bavaria where the students really engage. And uh, we also have a strong uh, connection to the industry. We have the Fund Sustainability Dialogue where we have uh, companies which we discuss about sustainability in general. And also the study courses, there are industry partners involved in our quality management circles where they help us uh, advancing uh, our courses. Next slide, please. And so here I summarized our key learnings. So it is important that the relevant people are brought under our one roof. And I mean that the lecturer, scientists and students. And this has to be a real roof, so not just a virtual one. There are approaches uh, in Europe where there's just some, some bioeconomy center builds. Uh, virtually, but the people stay wherever they are. And it's just that some curricula are modified. I don't think that this is a solution. You need, you really need to, to um, uh, engage the people and, and you can do that best if you have this uh, new roof and dedication. And well, uh, certainly the disciplines have to be linked. Uh, the study programs should be constructed new, or at least it's better if you want to achieve something instead of just doing cosmetic changes to existing programs. Uh, also, what you see, it's quite often. And also what we learned is that one discipline has to be the foundation. And the other things that, yeah, international partners are important and involve the employers, the industry, as well as the students. If you want to learn more, there's our home page link. Um, and also you can certainly contact me for further questions. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Volker, uh, for this uh, uh, great uh, overview of building a bioeconomy education. I like very much this uh, last slide uh, of a building and uh, one uh, roof. And uh, uh, now, uh, uh, although we have uh, taken uh, more time uh, than originally foreseen, but we are with the new system of Zoom, we are more flexible to 
uh, adjust. And I would like now to uh, open uh, the uh, uh, question and answer uh, session and uh, allow you, dear audience, to first of all, uh, uh, raise any questions to uh, any of the uh, presentations and uh, for that I think uh, we uh, you just need to uh, uh, um, maybe uh, then uh, indicate so that we do not create uh, chaos so that everybody is speaking but uh, indicate uh, uh, on the uh, uh, chat uh, that you would like to uh, raise a question. Uh, uh, so at the moment, uh, let's try to, as we uh, uh, experience this uh, uh, the first time, uh, uh, if anybody has a question to the presenters, uh, please uh, 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 unmute yourself and show um, on the video screen. So I can't see uh, any. Uh... So maybe, uh, yeah, I can't see any, ah, here is a chat. Yeah, this is not a question. So maybe in order to uh, uh, start the uh, discussion, I can uh, maybe uh, uh, raise um, some uh, uh, questions. Uh, uh, so, and uh, welcome also perhaps the uh, answers from the uh, uh, presenters. The, the challenge to develop tertiary education programs to educate uh, bioeconomy graduates that meet the range in expertise required in the circular sustainable bioeconomy workforce, including the need for system changes uh, who can support the transition to uh, uh, a sustainable uh, bioeconomy. We have heard many key contributions already from all the uh, uh, presenters, but uh, uh, are there uh, some, uh, let's say, specific, let's say the uh, three top challenges uh, which you uh, which you would see for this uh, point I'm happy to kick in uh, Roland otherwise yes please please go ahead um, by the way, there is also an, uh, a question in the chat by uh, Emilio Sordo about. Oh, oh sorry, I, which I, I think didn't. It's, so uh, yeah, it's so maybe Carsten, Carsten, could you uh, have a look at the chat because I wasn't wasn't looking at the chat, yeah, yeah. and then perhaps uh, uh, I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll feed it in after this question. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So then, uh, after Luke's uh, question, I will hand over to you, Carsten, to deal with the chat uh, questions. Yeah, please go ahead, Luke. No, actually, I don't have a question. I have an uh, observation. I, I think that uh, from the different sites that we um, had presentations from uh, today, we see um, very comparable approaches. They are not equal, you know, they depend on uh, specific location and, and possibilities and, and so on. But I think there is an, a very common approach to uh, be uh, beyond technical, to include uh, significantly uh, socioeconomic parameters in the, uh, in the programs. Um, I think uh, Kai underlined um, uh, the need to focus. To, to have a base program, a base core program that uh, on, on the sciences that would, uh, would do. And uh, I think an, a central question is how much would you include? What would you choose? And, uh, and so on. But I think the rest 
said, always uh, look at, uh, at the context, make sure that people have a sufficiently broad understanding, are experienced. Some of the programs look more in the, uh, the practical side uh, and so on. And then linking to the, um, the question that I saw from uh, Emilio about uh, developing countries, I think uh, the pandemic has opened up more possibilities in terms of uh, digital connect connectiveness, but the central challenge will be um, uh, assuming that uh, the developing world um, uh, would have uh, less resources, how would you get the practical component uh, starting in those cases where in principle, given their landmass, they should be uh, even bigger benefiters uh, from it. So I, I think this is that would erase a very important point. Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, Luke, for this uh, important uh, uh, comment. And I'll hand over to Carsten uh, Schurle to deal with uh, yeah, the I chat questions. I, I could just repeat the, the question again, but Luke answered it um, to, mm -hmm. to a far extent, I think. If there are any other proposals um, for Emilio, how to engage in, in the technology or by economy, um, living in a developing country, yeah, you're free to, to give some suggestions to him. That was his question. Maybe some perhaps in from my side, if, if you would allow. So certainly this would have been a good question also for the uh, breakout room number one, which was about synthetic biology specifically. Uh, but so from my experience, since we are also strong and we have our only foundry at the synthetic biology foundry, uh, yeah, certainly, uh, synthetic battery is a lot about equipment, uh, machinery, robotics, which is maybe not available uh, in, in any uh, country, but uh, it's also about the uh, artificial intelligence and about uh, designing. So a lot of bioinformatics coming in here, which you can also build up with computers, but generally is a link with, with other places and I said bioeconomy is about global uh, approaches and uh, there has to be the strong link between the developing countries as well as the developed countries and so uh, it's good to to have here partnerships look for partners uh, that are strong and then uh, build up some things and, and Karen already mentioned that Australia has a very strong synthetic biology uh, initiative um, and, and I know the synthetic biology there in, in at the UQ, QUT, Cyroso, with Claudia Vickers and others. Um, so there is really a lot going on, and I'm sure that the linkage with the develop, can, developing countries will be possible here. Or probably Karen can say also more about this, as, as she mentioned, synthetic biology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, maybe I'll just jump in. I'm not yes, sure please. I can give too much answer about the synthetic biology side. and. Um, developing countries, but if you think about biotechnology as being part of the bioeconomy, I definitely think um, internships um, perhaps are a way in. I know when I worked at Lonza, we took interns uh, from all over the world that did get restricted due to it, um, the EU restrictions, but um, I think perhaps that is one way to get in, um, students involved from developing countries in, in the field of bioeconomy. And I think you can add in, at least in South America, in Brazil, for example, they have very large um, bioethanol production. And it's also part of the bioeconomy and experience in this area becomes um, experience that you can apply to, uh, to other areas as well. And um, perhaps I can imagine that also virtual teaching would offer um, yeah, more options to involve um, students from developing countries. Is that also um, reality now? from your experience? Yeah, I, so, uh, uh, let's say any uh, experience, uh, I think uh, with digital uh, uh, teaching. Well, I can say something <laughs> because uh, uh, well, we have an, an, all these new study courses, and one is chemical biology, chemical biotechnology, which includes synthetic biology uh, curricula or, or courses. Um, and since half a year, we only do virtual teaching. So actually, currently, uh, we have 
master students from all over the world, which I've never seen due to Corona, which are only taught virtually, uh, which uh, certainly cannot stay at the very end of the study course, but uh, it's possible for, for quite some, some part of the study course. But when it's about the practical issues and, and Kai really mentioned the necessity, the, the real necessity to have also this practical experience. So you can just do anything virtually. And then it's necessary that the, the students are there, but uh, some parts uh, can be done virtually, definitely. I okay. think the, uh, now maybe maybe to respond to that, um, I think indeed the pandemic situation has given us a completely new view over um, which elements of course programs really need to be physical and in place and which elements could do with uh, uh, with more digital um, uh, interaction. I think the, the classical uh, delivery of a lecture for uh, for uh, for the lecture theater um, probably being replaced uh, by uh, much more time for student interaction directly with um, with uh, with uh, the, the, the professor. Um, the struggle I think we haven't solved yet, but that offers also possibilities for solving the developing countries uh, problem is that, you know, the, the discussion, at least in Delft that I'm seeing, and I've transplanted that also here to Limerick in Ireland, is uh, what level of um, actual physical experimentation do you really need? You know, if you go into the lab, um, you know, the actual pipetting or whatever is the equivalent of it is only a small fraction of the time and they spent in the uh, in the lab most of it is related to you know analysis of the data and um, and the, the brain work be behind it um, another element was um, the translation of the theoretical part into um, ind industrial realities which are really fast fastly a part of the student um, um, uh, experiences and perceptions uh, I, I heard, I'm not quite sure where it was uh, from the Australian uh, colleague, uh, the, uh, something about 3D uh, for, and, and the virtual um, aspect, you know, we have this whole world of uh, virtual reality coming up, the gaming uh, software, which uh, for other sectors has done great work. And there is um, probably a possibility that we did not explore yet. I'm not pleading for a full digital program. I think that is uh, that is certainly not what we should be heading at. I think uh, last year with all its ugly uh, sites, it has shown us that uh, we really should explore better and further how the digital world can help us. Um, and then it will be maybe more egalitarian and help also our colleagues in the developing part of the world. Okay, thank you uh, very much. Uh, look, I think, uh, we have to move on. I have uh, also put on uh, next slide identification of gaps in bioeconomy education offered by universities, training courses outside universities. We have heard uh, this uh, also in the talks, capacity building initiatives and global communication in bioeconomy education, training and capacity building. Uh, uh, are there beyond uh, what has already been said in the presentations? Uh, some points that need to be addressed. Roland, uh, this is this is Nello in Berencia. Yes, please. Can I? I'm, I'm not answering to the question on the screen. Mm -hmm. Be very honest immediately, but because the. the the screen address, and so far we've mainly been addressing education at university levels. But in all uh, seriousness, from an industry perspective, the first changes that we're facing, and it's going to be hitting us pretty soon if we don't change something dramatically and quickly, is at the vocational level. We are seeing already now in many uh, locations across Europe that we cannot find the, the, uh, the operators with the skills and competences that we need to really change industry around and, and moving into the future. So this is the first level that we need to, at least again, from an industry perspective, we need to address. And I was wondering whether any of the other colleagues on the, on the presenter's uh, slate this morning, do you have any view on that, any experience, any suggestions 
because we're, we're definitely looking. And I do have some experience in this field. And when I was working in the Netherlands, where we were setting up quite some uh, successful programs where we had this internship switching and allowing uh, students at the vocational level to spend quite some time in industry and vice versa. This, this was very successful. And this is something that I'm looking at um, also introducing more into the bio-based industry. But any, in general, frankly spoken, the first thing that we need to, from an industry again, we need to address is the skills and competences set needed at the vocational level. Okay, so are there from the uh, academia uh, side uh, some uh, 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 approaches uh, that uh, uh, would be uh, uh, applicable at uh, different uh, uh, sites? I can only uh, underline what uh, what Nilo said. You know, this is a bigger problem. Um, where I'm now, Western Ireland, we have a number of uh, biopharma sites which are exploding because of the vaccine and uh, and, and other health um, issues. So, you know, only in Cologne, we will see about 1,400 new staff. Many of them are uh, not academic and have a more vocational um, need a vocational background. It's difficult to get them and. It is um, probably an, um, a big um, delay in the growth of these, uh, these industries. You know, of course, with automation, you can do things. There is also even in, in agricultural spaces, a lot of automation efforts going on. But um, there is a lot of room for, for, this, uh, for these uh, skills level. You know, think about things like, um, like repair, maintenance of, uh, of these facilities. It is not only about the direct operation. And we saw in the pandemic um, now with the um, with, with people traveling less for all sorts of reasons, uh, lockdowns and, and others, that uh, that 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 has led to a number of operational issues uh, with with the industry. I have no solution uh, for this, but uh, I can only underline the need. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Luca. I think uh, it's very important to uh, have this uh, gap. Uh, uh, identified. Uh, I think uh, we, we should also look uh, maybe to uh, Japan. Uh, Yasuhisu, uh, do you, can you say something about the experience on this uh, type of uh, how to address this vocational uh, level gap in Japan? Yeah, uh, a gap. So, uh, but uh, previous uh, topic, but uh, so uh, biotechnology first uh, uh, was started uh, uh, by agriculture science. So Japan had agriculture chemistry for 100 years and it developed very well, uh, uh, like uh, fermentation industry already appeared in the 1950s. So uh, we uh, probably Japan has led the already uh, kind of bioeconomy we already did and uh, uh, of course, also in the Yedo era, a long time ago, it was totally closed and uh, kind uh, per perfect bioeconomy without petroleum. So we did a very uh, economical way. So uh, anyway, in the 90s also, uh, our, our uh, I mean, uh, institute was started uh, in 1990 uh, over, uh, based on uh, bioeconomy. So, uh, but uh, at the time, uh, petroleum uh, problem was there, uh, so the luck. Now, uh, United States produce uh, petroleum, and also I wondered uh, among uh, listening to your discussion that uh, is there any strong uh, need for uh, bioeconomy? So there was a petroleum crisis, but uh, uh, how do you? Uh, I mean, um, the, the motivation uh, of, because of the plastic problem or. How, how a student or people are uh, uh, feeling the menace of such uh, problems. So is there any strong, uh, strong motivation? So that was the question. So we started already 30 years ago of, uh, of, uh, of uh, sustainable chemistry, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, after that, we are uh, turning on more, more, a little bit later than, Europe is very successful in the pharmaceutical industry, but we are, underdeveloped a little bit uh, for pharmaceutical in the so uh, our, our biotechnology my biotechnology uh, 
uh, center changed the name to uh, biopharmaceutical center. So, uh, uh, and so the gap, uh, mm, yeah, of course there is a gap because uh, we uh, academia people in Japan uh, pursue the bioeconomy for a long time, but the country still using the petroleum. So uh, what, what guarantees uh, education? And if you, for example, there are many good uh, examples of country, uh, many countries. Also, my question was, how do you accredit? So if you say you do, do this education, but it should be confirmed by third, com com third company that you are doing this education according to your pro uh, designed uh, educational system, somebody has to accredi accreditate. That mm -hmm. means uh, it is really so. So uh, uh, by what standard or one professor uh, saying so, or whole of, of your department is uh, agreeing that you are going to do that one. So. Uh, such kind of basic knowledge I didn't uh, understand. So uh, about my computer digital science, I'm much interested in because uh, students are not uh, like, uh, don't, don't work, work as we did. So that they don't spend long hours. So I'm looking for some something interesting for them to, to keep uh, about their interest and still uh, something very new to uh, some science. So uh, I'm, we are counting the, uh, our primary sequence like alphabet, like a literature. So uh, uh, students are much interested in that. So that's all. So that maybe time's up. So uh, my talk is not uh, very, uh, uh, just one topic, one topic, not, not uh, salary, uh, uh, theoretical uh, talk, comment. But I, uh, just my impression about uh, uh, this talk. So that's all. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, yeah, so he's so far yeah. giving this great uh, uh, also impression uh, from, um, from Japan. Uh, any other uh, uh, comments? So uh, then the next point is the pros and cons of specific discipline focused programs uh, with a, a circular sustainable bioeconomy overview versus the, the general bioeconomy programs that impart knowledge and systems thinking across the different disciplines. We have heard this already in, uh, in uh, talks. Uh, are there any additional uh, key contributions from the audience or the speakers? If I may raise a question, I'm wondering um, whether these programs are focused on, on um, certain industries like chemical industry, or do you also look at um, the potential to have, um, yeah, employment in, in um, food industry, um, automobile industry or textile industry or all relevant industry do you also address topics from these fields um may i answer or mm -hmm. to your yes. question yes please go ahead uh, so uh definitely the chemical industry is just one player among many many others and it's not also not only industry it's just the same as uh, governmental places and and regulation uh behörden etc that uh, where we need people with the thinking uh, and, and the knowledge that's necessary for bioeconomy transformation and so it's all about the the skills, the transfer skills that are taught, and uh, but also certainly a certain focus, uh, a certain as I said, fundamentals. And here, um, in our case specifically, we we also include material, biotechnology material. But this is also just one subject. Generally, education uh, is not only for industry. I mean, it's important, but uh, it has to be wider. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Volker. Any other comments to this topic? Again, I would just like to, to underline what, um, what Volker says. Um, 
um, but it would be good to link industry um, in, for instance, more integrative elements of, uh, of courses. That's why I uh, uh, use the design topic in my, um, my pitch for the, uh, for the session that, that allows uh, to, to place innovation in a practical uh, context and, and confront students with uh, industry specific parameters. And um, I was probably too quick, but I, I gave you an, an overview of the, the companies that we work with, which are from, you know, airlines to uh, transport, to uh, the chemical sector, to food, to, to pharma, you know. And I think um, the question there pops up, and I think Kai mentioned that. Um, what is the, the, the real core that we have to teach our, our students, you know? I've, yes, thermodynamics, yes, basic mathematics, yes, basic economy yes basic uh, biochemistry but then what you know i've had significant fights with my delft colleagues because of course everybody has their hobby horses that need to be fed into the program and the poor students only have 24 hours a day and uh, and for well, five years in our case to to lead it and what we need them to do is uh, take the base material and apply it just to real life problems, you know, and, and current problems that that uh, they will probably be making their uh, career on and understand that um, from these basic tools, they can learn and adopt other areas and so on, give them the confidence that they can do, that they, the skill set to do that in a team, to, to deal with uh, the fact that you have different personalities uh, and that you can benefit from the diversity and you know, all the things that, that, uh, that would, uh, would help them to be, become an, um, a good uh, colleague in, well, whatever setting, academic or, or industrial or governmental and so on. I think it would be great if we have a few more of that talent in some of our political ranks that would uh, greatly enhance uh, the quality of decision-making, I think. So that's one of uh, the areas that I'm sending my, uh, my grads to. Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, Luke. Uh, uh, are there any more um, additional comments to this point? Yeah, I sort of, yes, I do. I have a, um, perhaps from a different point of view, but it touches a little bit on what Luke has just been saying. We've been concentrating really strongly on um, the science side of things, but for a bioeconomy to be truly successful, we actually need the whole of society to actually join in and take part. So as uh, they were saying about airlines, but also um, in the restaurant industry or um, on social media to counter conspiracy theories. So you need actually need journalists, you need people that can go in and do um, sustainability audits uh, and also recommend to companies how they can um, change their, um, their own companies into more sustainable programs. And I think for that, you actually need, um, let's say us, to feed into these um, courses in communication or these courses in, um, uh, in, in fashion and all of these things so that these people actually can grasp the concepts or the scientific concepts that are so important to influence politicians, to influence policy, to influence um, uh, just the general public into actually jumping onto the bioeconomy um, program. That's just a comment. Yeah, I think a very important uh, comment is also about uh, languages, languages in different uh, communities, uh, uh, also beyond uh, science. And uh, as we see also uh, that uh, decisions are not always based on science, I think it's uh, now a special time to make, to remind the whole uh, world that science has been essential for the quality of life we have in the in the current uh, century yeah thank you uh, very much karen for your point well taken kai you want to add something yeah just add to the question that you've put up there right now the specific discipline focused programs with some csb overview or more a csb focused program um well i don't think there's a conflict just leave it as a point of diversity up to the universities, what kind of program that can shape best and have the different offers around. And this is probably the best way to get um, heterogeneously 
skilled workforce for any kind of employer later on, um, they can pick whatever they need best at the end. And if you have a multitude of, of programs running, you um, will also f see a natural evolution and, and selection of best programs coming out. So I would not give any recommendation either direction at this point. I think, yeah, that's uh, well taken. I think it's a very good point. So it's uh, may may maybe not thinking strictly in either or, but uh, uh, one and the other, both, both uh, together. So maybe similar like uh, if, uh, if I'm hiking in the mountains, uh, lots of stones, and I have to know the general view, where do I want to go, even if I don't see the goal, but have to take care not to fall over the next stone. Okay, thank you very much. I think we need to move forward. Then uh, I think it was already mentioned the lifelong, lifelong learning uh, uh, concepts. I think it's uh, delivering a lifelong learning concepts to support the career pathways in the circular sustainable bioeconomy. Uh, I think, uh, uh, are there any additional key contributions to this outcome? Kai, do you want to add something to this? I think lifelong learning comes automatically. You will be forced to change your jobs more frequently than in the past and you have to become an expert in a new field from time to time. So education, university education can deliver the fundamentals, for example, the ability to do research, to um, find information and digest it well and to apply it in teamwork and everything else will be left up to you to, to move, become expert again in new fields and again. Right, to become Maybe then... One uh, short comment because I have to leave um, yeah. sorry, my last word. So indeed uh, what Kai says is, is very true. Uh, so it's up to, to all the people. Uh, in the industry to edu re educate themselves. Uh, however, we at academics, what we can do and should do is enable this and uh, bring up programs because, well, at the universities, also the uh, new technologies are developed. And, and here, uh, what I see, at least at TUM, but also certainly at many other places, the lifelong learning programs are sprouting or coming up where industry is re engaged. And uh, just to have it uh yeah as a possibility so um thanks a lot all, all of you really enjoyed the session and good luck yeah thank you very much Volker, for your taking yeah, part in your contributions and we need to come to an end uh, so we have the uh, uh uh different expectations uh i think this is a difficult subject national nationally regionally and globally for the expertise in the csb workforce and the added value derived from multinational corporations to share and promote education training and capacity building uh, approaches i think that's what we uh, are trying to do uh, with this uh, workshop uh, and is there any additional uh, key contribution uh, to this outcome. Nelo, do you want to mention something? Yeah, a while ago, I wanted to make some comments, uh, especially, especially in, a, in the field of lifelong learning. It is essential that the interaction between industry and education institutions is, is very intimate, to say, to say the least, because it is the industry that will drive the need for um, for the sitting employees, if I may call them like that, to to keep up their the knowledge and the skills to you know to to stay on board as the industry moves ahead and the changes in the industry are going to uh, to to accelerate. So it is essential that we have a good system for lifelong learning. And in this field, indeed, we're looking to establishing a, a good system with education institutions, be it on University of Applied Science or research or vocation, whatever. But it is, it is essential that industry makes clear what it is that it needs in skills uh, to keep the employees on board. Um, when, if I look at this 
question here on the screen. One thing we know already now, Europe is a complex thing. It differs from region to region, from country to country. It is, it is, it's a, it looks like a, like a forest. And it is um, essential therefore that we think global, but act locally. We have to have this broad direction that we wanna go in with the bio-based uh, industry and, and the education, the skills and competences is needed but we have to take into account the differences on the sites. And it may well be that the needs for a particular uh, set skills are, is totally different in one region to the other. And I believe, I, I think it was Luke who said that we have to put everything in the real context. And it's, this is essential for us to, uh, there's no silver bullet. We have to have many silver bullets to, to move ahead. And my last comment is, the other thing that we believe also is very important is to try and get bioeconomy and sustainability and circularity into mainstream education. And in order to do this, we have to really start somewhere in primary education, move on to secondary, etc. If we only focus on university, it's not going to work. We need then two generations to get it. We need to start now at the, as, as low as possible levels in the, in, in the education systems. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Delo. This is a very important uh, aspect, and uh, this uh, was actually uh, dealt with in a parallel session by Judith Feiche, not just on this, uh, to really start very early and uh, in, in education to, to train the next uh, generation. Uh, so we have to move on to uh, the uh, last uh, point. Uh, uh, I think we have heard already in uh, the talks, the identification of strategies to better integrate uh, CSB into uh, uh, programs by, oh no, this is, this is just related. Sorry, I mixed this up. This was just uh, what you mentioned, Nelo, uh, linking teachers uh, with practice partners in order to understand the demands on the future workforce Therefore, not only raising the awareness of school, school pupils on CSP, but also possibly influencing their career choices. Of course, uh, the young generation, when they are in, at the age where they have to choose what are they going, what are they going to learn? Uh, uh, what are the uh, offerings that are really uh, put into, the, into this um, pre-academic uh, 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 school and uh, training. Uh, so are there any, do you want to add something on, on this point, uh, Nelo? I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it says a lot here and, and we, uh, <clears throat> the, the colleague speakers covered a lot of this ground. <clears throat> but I believe also the, um, if we can establish opportunities to have <clears throat> students and in particular, graduating students be in close contact with where the industry that will work, that is beneficial for both sides, mm -hmm. for the students to have a good view on possible career opportunities. And this may be in different directions. And, you know, they, then they, it will help them make a choice that better fits their own taste, their own interests and their own talents. And mm -hmm. also for the industry, it will be good to see what our potential employees and what field we, we could use um, which person and also this interaction will give us a, a view as to what is it that the students coming or nearly coming into the field have uh, in their position in terms of skills and competences. We see this uh, effect already now. We, we, we just started, we have a two year program uh, that we call Biobase in, uh, in this in Biobase Innovation Student Competence Europe BISC E. Uh, competition which um, is running on a national level and then we have a European final and um, what we are now we're going to expand this program such such that industry will provide what I call real-time issues into these competitions so the students can really uh, focus on things that industry is facing today already and they work on real things and this will also improve their their insights into the industry um, yeah so it's a lot it's a lot there yeah, absolutely. No, I think uh, this is a very important aspect and it has been already alluded to in, uh, in a couple of, uh, of talks. And of course, uh, also industries in uh, different countries have, of course, uh, 
uh, uh, extended programs in what uh, Karen uh, mentioned, apprenticeships. And of course, the question is, what type of new apprenticeships could be imagined to be created uh, to really serve, let's say, the bio-based uh, industries? I don't know, Nelo, whether you have at the, at the BIC level thought about uh, uh, programs on apprenticeships in European industries. May, may I may I step in for a moment because yes. I have to leave them also. Uh, apologies, uh, Nilo, but um, um, the focus is now on, on students, but I think um, the, the issue that, that Nilo raised before, the um, vocational training, you know, at the moment you are in an academic um, role, interaction with industry is easy, academic with research and cutting edges is easy, but that is not the case in vocational training and certainly not at uh, primary schools and, uh, and so on. So if we talk about apprenticeships, sure, for students um, of, of universities and so on, but I would say um, uh, teaching the teacher is becoming more and more uh, important uh, also. And I think there, there are programs, but you know, they are overloaded in their usual activities by admin and, 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 and other things. Um, this may be an effort that is a real gap. But now my um, next appointment is already calling in, so I uh, unfortunately have to say goodbye and um, thanks for organizing great session uh, and thanks for everybody participating in it and see you uh, in the next opportunity. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Luke, for your uh, great uh, contribution. And uh, uh, I think uh, we also need to uh, come to a close uh, now. This is the last slide. Uh, on Nelo, uh, sorry, I, uh, uh, I interrupted you. You wanted to say something. No, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I agree also 100% what Luke just said, teaching the teacher. This is so important nowadays. So no, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, right. Yeah. So uh, sorry that I uh, also need to come to a close. I think there are, of course, uh, uh, many more uh, uh, aspects of this complex issue to be uh, discussed, but uh, we uh, have to uh, close uh, because we are one hour, more than one hour later than uh, originally planned. Fortunately, uh, the system didn't collapse uh, today uh, as the other, the other day. Uh, and so I thank uh, 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 all the speakers for the excellent uh, uh, presentations and all the uh, uh, from uh, your participants for your active participation in these sub workshops and further information can be found in two brand new publications uh, which uh, I have um, uh, co-edited and there is the second uh, and I'm very happy that uh, that the two publishers Elsevier and Wiley have uh, been able to complete these special issues just for the Global Bioeconomy Summit and uh, the one uh, is uh, the second new biotechnology special issue on uh, bioeconomy, where uh, we also have um, contributions uh, uh, to the bioeconomy uh, education. Uh, uh, I don't know whether uh, Marina Lotti is uh, still in the audience. Uh, Marina, can you hear me? This doesn't seem to be the case. She had uh, also a contribution. And we have a second uh, special issue uh, from the Biotechnology Journal, focusing on one technical issue of uh, uh, biocatalysis, which is a key enabling technology for the uh, bioeconomy. So I think uh, it was more than 60 minutes. It was uh, uh, still very short for discussing this highly complex uh, topic. So, uh, uh, Carsten Schürle and me would welcome your input after this session also by email to the addresses indicated uh, uh, below. And uh, I uh, will have the GPS 2020 uh, uh, make uh, all the presentations available. Is there any speaker who would not like uh, to have the, their 
PDF files shown on the GBS uh, 2020 website for the registered participants, then he should send me a note that he does not want uh, sli these slides to be shown there. Otherwise, they would be shown there. So with this, I would uh, also uh, thank you once again all and hand over also to uh, Carsten Schürle for the uh, final words. Yeah, thank you very much. I just like to join um, your farewell address, Roland, and thank you very much, everybody, for your discussion and the input. I hope we get a nice collection on um, ideas from this, yeah, 120 minutes. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Okay, thank you uh, all uh, from wherever you joined us. Um, uh, it has been a true. Uh, global bioeconomy discussion and uh, I wish you uh, uh, a good evening, a uh, nice uh, lunch and uh, a happy afternoon and thank you uh, so much. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Goodbye. everybody. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye.